All right, FAQ number 70. What are the three future judgments? Now, I believe that there are more than just three judgments coming. I believe that the catching away of the body of Christ is going to be a judgment because it's going to separate true converts from false converts. So that is a judgment. But what I'm talking about in this video is actual judgments where you have Jesus sitting on a throne and people being brought before him to be judged. Okay, so what will be the first one? Turn your Bible to Romans chapter 14, verse 10. It says here, But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, so you see the judgment seat of Christ there is a judgment. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You say, what happens at this judgment? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay, so this is a description of what's going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ. Your works are going to be tried by fire. We're going to stand before that judgment seat of Christ. Now, I believe when the catching away happens, the judgment seat of Christ happens shortly thereafter. We go up, we meet the Lord in the, in the air, in the clouds, and from there we go with Him to heaven. And when we get to heaven, it's going to be time to have our works judged. Okay, We are not judged at that judgment. Okay, It's not, oh, well, you really didn't do much for me. Well, sorry, you're lost now. You're going to hell. No, no, no. That judgment's already been taken care of. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, when you get saved, when you're born again, you're, you've passed from death unto life. Okay, You are now saved. You're going to heaven. But now your works get tried at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, And if you mess around with the flesh, and I have a whole study on the judgment seat of Christ. You can hear all the aspects of it there. Just look it up. Just go into my channel and go to the search area and just put in judgment seat of Christ. It'll There's a really big study I did on that, two-part study. And I think I have it just as an audio sermon now, both parts in one study, I think. Pretty sure. But, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an important thing. And if you mess around with the flesh and you mess around doing worldly things, you're going to see all you worked for in your life just burned up. But when you're out there and you're witnessing and you're, and you're you know, listening to the right kind of music and, and all the things that we're supposed to do as Christians, those things, uh, you know, are the gold, silver, precious stones, you know, is what you do for the Lord. And those things, gold, silver, and precious stones can make it through a fire, okay? Wood, hay, and stubble does not. All right, so first judgment there that's in the future is for the body of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. And ironically, by the way, I just want to say this quickly, post-tribbers, these people that say you're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble or the tribulation, as they'll call it, um, those people somehow conveniently leave out the judgment seat of Christ. Interesting. Because you go up and you, you, know, you come back down with Jesus and you rule for the thousand-year millennial kingdom. And uh, most of them in their prophetic timelines, they don't talk about the judgment seat of Christ. Very interesting. But the next judgment that will happen in the future, you go to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory... And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And he goes down through there. And um, verse 41, he says to the sheep, Go into the kingdom. Verse 41, what's he say to the goats? Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So it's definitely a judgment. The saved go into the millennial kingdom. The, left, or the, uh, the goats on the left, they go into the lake of fire there. So uh, that's definitely a judgment. Now when does that happen? That happens at the second advent, when Jesus Christ comes down. Okay, 
Jesus is not coming back in the sense of coming down to the earth at the rapture. Okay, The catching away of the body of Christ, Jesus is in the clouds and he calls us up. He does not come down and physically touch on the earth. That doesn't happen until the second advent. He comes back, Revelation chapter 19, and destroys the Antichrist and the false prophet and their army. And then he marches triumphantly after killing a 200 million man army by himself. Pretty good deal there. Marches triumphantly with us, his saints, the angels there, you know. Uh, we come in uh, with him to Jerusalem and he sets himself up as the king. And then he sends us out and we gather together all of the people that have survived the time of Jacob's trouble. Bring them to Jerusalem for judgment. Okay, and the ones that did the good works and the good deeds here at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, those ones go into the millennial kingdom. The ones that are bad and did not do those things and just were survivalists and just kind of were selfish and whatever else, they go into the lake of fire right there. That's a judgment. Now, what's the final judgment? Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, it says here, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, judgment, from whose faith, face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Very ironic because every lost person that you're ever going to meet, that's a Christ-rejecting sinner, um, they all say, well, I think I'm going to be tried by my works. I think I'm going to be judged by my works. And if my good works outweigh my bad works and everything else, you know, then I'll make it. Um, well, you'll never make it because your good works are never going to outweigh your bad works. But the point is, they are actually speaking absolute truth. Because you see the final judgment, they're judged according to their works. And uh, their works are that they lived as sinners. They lived as self-righteous sinners. I don't care how, how nice a person is or how good a person is. The point is, if they reject Jesus Christ, they're covering up things. They got some skeletons in their closet that would turn your hair white if you knew what they were. Okay, the Bible says that your thoughts are going to be judged at that judgment. Every secret thing is going to be brought into the judgment. So when those books are open, all the dirty secrets of your life are going to come out. All those things that nobody else knows about, they're coming out at that judgment. If you're lost. If you're saved, well... Christ's righteousness is imputed to you. So those bad, wicked things that you've done as a sinner before you got saved, those things don't come out. They're covered. They're hidden. They never come up at the judgment. Now, you say, what if I do bad things after I get saved? Well, then they're going to show up at the judgment seat of Christ not to condemn you to hell, but you wasted your time on that fleshly thing there. Why did you look at that pornography? Why did you drink that alcohol and get drunk that time? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why did you lie? Why did you, you know, when you should have passed out a track you didn't, you know? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? I could have rewarded you. You suffer loss. See? Every time you are sinning as a Christian, it's keeping you from earning rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Those two things are not mutually, you know, uh, exclusive there. I mean, they're, they're not able to work together. I'm living a life of sin and serving Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. The more sin you give up, the more you're going to be able to serve the Lord. Okay? The flesh and the Spirit cannot work together. You have to put down the flesh and let the Holy Spirit take over and give you courage to go and witness to people and give you courage to, to get tracks out and, and to give you courage to even even get on YouTube. I mean, I mean that's a, a fairly easy thing that you can do. You see somebody that's lost in the comment section or whatever else, witness to them. Tell them your testimony, what, whatever. I mean, there's, there's a million ways that you can serve the Lord. And the more of that you do, the more you're going to earn rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And, you know, uh, the fire is going to be there at that judgment. And it's going to try our works. 
That's not going to be a, you know, oh, I can't wait for the judgment seat of Christ. It's going to be scary. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be brought out in times that you're going to realize, uh, boy, I sure wasted my life away. I mean, and I'm speaking as somebody that has. I've wasted a lot of time after I've been saved. There have been many times that I just, I go for a long time without doing anything for the Lord. You know, and I strive constantly to get better at that. There are many, many times that I'm, just, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to do my best and you keep moving forward. Don't beat yourself up because you made mistakes as a Christian. You know, just get back in the fight. Get back to serving the Lord because you will be judged. And if you're lost, you're going to have to make it through that time of Jacob's trouble. If you miss the rapture, you have to make it through the time of Jacob's trouble. If, you, if you're martyred and killed in that time, well, then, okay, you go to heaven. But if you can somehow survive to the end, well, make sure that you're doing the things that are in Matthew chapter 25, feeding the poor and, you know, things like that. You know, make sure that you are doing right because you're going to be judged at the judgment of the nations. And if you're lost and you die, well, you're going to show up at the great white throne judgment. And by the way, those people that mock you and put you down and say, you know, oh, you stupid Christian and all this and that and laugh at you and everything and, and mock the Bible, mock Jesus Christ, they're going to be throw, showing up at the, well, throwing up. <laughs> they're going to be showing up at the judgment or the uh, great white throne judgment as well. So every knee is going to bow. Everybody's going to get the judgment. Okay? Every single man and woman that ever lived. And by the way, every Hollywood celebrity, every villain of the past, Adolf Hitler, every pope, every villain, monster, whoever, they're all going to be there at the Great White Throne Judgment. Everybody that's died and rejected Jesus Christ. Those celebrities, oh, wouldn't it be something to see a celebrity? You will one day. If they don't get saved, if they get saved, they'll be there at the Judgment Seat of Christ. If they don't get saved, it's going to be the Great White Throne Judgment. And you aren't going to be up there, if you're saved, you aren't going to be up at the right hand of, of the Lord over there with all the other saints, looking down and going, wow, if I could just get her autograph, or if I could just get his autograph, you're going to be looking down and saying, what a poor creature, before they're cast in the lake of fire. So those are the three future judgments that are coming.